Okay, crew, we need to get everything tied down. We need to pull the sails in tight because we are going to be sailing through that storm over there. Trust me, it, it'll work. I've, I've read about this before. Okay, I've, ne I've never actually done it, but um, it, I'm sure it works. I, no, I've never seen somebody do it. You're just going to have to trust me and have confidence in your captain that I read it in that comic, I mean that uh, sailing book. Um, and so we're going to go right through that storm. Not a single problem. Uh, Cody, you're going to be steering. I'm going to be down in the bottom of the boat um, taking inventory. Yeah, we'll see ya. Oh, hey there. I didn't see ya. Um, welcome to the captain's cabin. It's good to have you with us as we continue on our voyage of the seven seas. This week we're looking at confidence. That's right, confidence. But not confidence in ourselves. No. Now, confidence is relying on or firmly trusting someone or something. So we're not talking about any old confidence this week. We're talking about our confidence in the Lord. So let's check out the big Bible and see what our verse is for the week. All right. Here we go. Our verse this week is in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. That's in the Old Testament, if you didn't remember. And it says this, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. Let me say that again. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. Jeremiah 17, 7. All right. So let's get set to explore confidence. You know, the Bible is full of stories that show how men had confidence in God and how God did what He said He would do and work things out. But there's just as many stories in the Bible of men who lost their confidence in God, uh, who could not trust God when He said He would do something, and we see them suffering because of it. None more so than the children of Israel in the wilderness. Um, and for you, remember the story that started with Moses God had sent him to rescue the, the Israelites who were slaves in Egypt, and they got out finally, and they crossed the Red Sea. And it seems like from then on, it was just kind of a pattern of God would do something incredible, and then days later, the children of Israel, would they'd lose their confidence in God. They thought He'd abandoned them. And so they'd cry out, or they'd whine, or they'd want to go back to Egypt. And just time and time again, and they would cry out, God would come in and would do something uh, incredible, as he was leading them to a certain place, he would take them there and get them there, and they would see that everything had been provided for them. Uh, but they still continually lost confidence in God. And so we see at the beginning, um, God lead his people, these Israelites, with Moses. He led them to the land that he had promised them. That's why we call it the promised land. Um, it was actually called the land of Canaan. And it was a land that God had promised Abraham generations before uh, the Israelites got there uh, that he was going to give them. And so he led them to this land and there were other people that had taken up living in there and God was going to drive those people out uh, in this land that he had, he had promised the Israelites. And so we read in Numbers chapter 13 and 14 uh, how Moses sent out 12 spies uh, to check out the land to see the best way to, to go and to see what, what the cities look like and what, the, what was their food and water and those kind of things. The twelve spies returned and they made their report before Moses and the people. And they said, you know, the land is flowing with milk and honey. It meant that it was, it was uh, full of food and things grew. And they brought back a cluster of grapes that were huge. Um, but they said... It may be a paradise there, but there's no way we're going to be able to, to go in there and take, take that land for ourselves. Um, they said, the people there will kill us with the sword. I mean, they'll just kill us right away. 
He said, somebody said, they'll take our wives. Another said, they'll take our children as plunder. They'll make them slaves. They said, they're, they're too powerful. Their cities are too big. Their cities, the walls are too tough. There's no way we can get in there. Uh, they're too well defended. In fact, the walls, they go all the way up to the sky. And the people, they're way stronger than us. And they're way bigger than us. See how tall they are? In fact, some of them are giants. Literal giants. That was the, the first ten. But the other two, Caleb, he said, we can do it. Let's go. And Joshua, he said, don't be afraid. God is with us. But you know what? The people listened to the ten, even though Aaron and Moses and Caleb and Joshua, they said, you know, you've got to trust God. We can do this. They refused. And God said, you know what? None of, none of you people uh, who have refused will go in. And God said, I, this land will be for your children. None of you, none of you adults uh, will see the land of Canaan because you did not trust me. You did not have confidence that I would go before you and fight your battles. The only ones that were going to go through as adults would be Caleb and Joshua because they trusted and had confidence in me. The rest, you all will wander in the desert until only your children are left and they will go in. You know, confidence and trust in God is not just something for those heroes of the Bible that we read about. No, trust in God, confidence in God, is something that we're called to do as well. We need to trust that God is who He says He is, and He's going to do the things He said He'll do. You know, we, we can trust that God loves us, that He sent His Son for us, that He forgives us. We can have confidence that there's a place in heaven for us, that He wants good for us, that He knows us and He hears our prayers. You know what? There are so many things that we can have confidence in God about. We just have to trust Him in the Bible. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for the love that You have for us. We thank You that, that You are honest and reliable, and that you do what you say you'll do. And we can have confidence that you do that. We can trust your word. We can trust the Bible. We thank you so much for stories that show us and reinforce that we can trust you. Lord, we thank you for your son. We pray for our world. We pray for peace. We pray that you would continue to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, how about we check in with Gibby and his sister Carly and their uncle Spencer, and let's see if they've got off that island, or at least Gibby's figured out how to charge his video games with a pineapple. been looking everywhere for you. Actually, I've been looking for a pineapple. Why are you looking for a pineapple? You know what? Forget it. I really don't want to know. I'll remember that when you want to play Munich Frog Hunters of the 23rd Parallel. Right. Because you're going to be charging your video game with a pineapple. I am, if I can find a stinking pineapple. That boy needs professional help. Ah, it could work. Look, I get you upset about our little mishap. Mishap? You mean how we're stuck on a deserted island because the compass on your flea market boat didn't work? Or how Gibby the Gifted didn't realize he was looking at the map upside down? Right. Or how someone spilled her flavored water over the radio and shorted it out. I said I was sorry. That was a... An accident? Yes, all of our problems today have been accidents. We have to remember to have compassion for people even when their accidents affect us. I know. 
I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Of course. I forgive you. Now let's go find your brother before he gets more lost than he already is. I can't believe he thinks he can charge his video games with a pineapple. Where does he come up with these ideas? No idea. All right. Well, we did not get any new submissions this week for our, our Good Samaritan Challenge, but we did miss a, a picture from last week. And so here is a picture of John Quinn and Truly building their fort in the rain and working and playing together and showing kindness to each other. Thanks for the picture, and sorry we missed it last week. And All right, our challenge this week, we're going to fall back to our story of the spies and Caleb and Joshua. And so if you can come up with a fun picture of being a spy um, or carrying giant grapes or whatever you want to do that goes with that story, that would be awesome. If you'll take that picture or that short video um, and send it in to greg at tenthandbroad.org. We're going to put it right here. If you'll send that there or you can get it to us through one of our Facebook pages, um, we'll get it in next week's video. Uh, these seem to be a little bit harder to do than our color one was, uh, but I want to encourage you to try to, to think through the story this week and come up with a picture and get it in for us. All right. Thanks so much for being with us this week, and we'll see you next time on the Digital Kid Zone. All right. It looks like sailing through this storm was a mistake. I don't know where I got the idea that it would be good. Must have been that comic book I read last night. Well... All we can do is keep going. Anybody want to take a turn at the wheel? It's feeling a little humid out here.